My career in journalism began at RIA Novosti, which was an unusual media organization for Russia, a state-run agency with an excellent reputation for balance and fair reporting. But on December 12, 2013, the man whom Western media labeled as Kremlin, chief propagandist Dmitry Kiselev, appeared in our newsroom. The period of impartial journalism is over. Objectivity is a myth, Kiselev told us. Shortly after, I quit. At the time, nothing was available except a job as a reporter on a TV channel that was controlled by Moscow government. I focused on reporting issues as far removed from politics as possible. New metro line, about bad road conditions, extraordinary traffic jams. On that level there was no censorship, and sometimes it even felt like I was doing real journalism. Still, my profession made me feel uncomfortable with myself, and after Crimea it went from bad to worse. There would be no time for truth-seeking now. Our editors told us, our country is living in a Cold War era. From our studios we were teaching the entire country the whole new vocabulary. Junta – Ukrainian government. Butchers – Ukrainian army. The fifth clone – Russian opposition. None of these words were used in a private conversation in a newsroom. But still working there felt like swimming in a shark tank. So in summer 2014 Moscow authorities introduced toll parking. My colleague Anna had to give the story a positive spin, even though she would take the license plates of her own car to hide it from traffic inspectors. She couldn't find any real people to interview who supported the reform either, so state-run companies provided us with employees who pretended to be local residents. Lots of us went through professional and personal collisions with ourselves. I'd say about 50-60% were those like me who wanted to quit and felt bad for working there. About a quarter they didn't give a damn, and the rest were sure that they were doing the right thing. So the people walking around me, I understood them. Many of them started out as young reporters in the early 2000s, when TV was an open platform for discussions. But by the time Putin began clamping down on media, they had kids, mortgages. Most of them are just regular people, hoping that their friends and relatives won't see what they are saying from TV screen. So I quit, seven months after taking the job. Recently I went drinking with an old friend that worked at the other government control channel. He had risen quickly through the ranks, making enough money to move his wife and two young daughters to Vietnam, where they now live in a cottage on the beach. In a year or two he hopes to move there, open up a small hotel and forget all the things he is covering now. 